Hi everyone, good to see you again. <laughs> so good to have to have you guys again here on the second part of this here to help episode. For those of you who weren't here yesterday, here to help is an Adobe Live special where two designers, Julia and myself, will be working tirelessly over the span of these two days to help a business in need. And this episode, we're helping Tiny Bodega, a really cool new small business. You guys should go check it out at Tiny Bodega on Instagram. But, and, and today we will be focusing our efforts on social media branding. Yesterday, we worked on doing some templates and social media animated posts in XD, which Julia has some amazing tricks for that. And today we will be working on social media optimization and Giphy creation. So before we get started and go into the fun part, let me just run a couple of housekeeping things and announcements. The, today, like every day, it has been super busy and productive, like Julia was feeling yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just came out of the daily creative challenge with guess who? Julia. Hey. <laughs> it's some some really cool things and textures. So if you guys haven't checked it out, go check it out after this stream. And if you guys did check it out, submit your work and Julia will give you some some feedback. Um, right now we're on the branding and identity design with us too. And then after that, we have the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard and after the draw along with Kyle. And to finish the day, we have a design off with Voodoo Val and Sosomaika. So hopefully you guys can tune in for whatever you consider relevant for you. And um, another thing I wanted to point out, you guys, if you are not watching us on Behance and you're on YouTube, get out and come watch us. That's where the cool kids hang out. Come on. Yeah, it's be.net slash life. This is where we are. This is where you can directly ask us questions right now on the spot and we will have to spontaneously find an answer to them. <laughs> <laughs> can see all of your comments which by the way voodoo is loving your hair julia and Yay, thank you it's only for you guys only for you <laughs> <laughs> another thing i wanted to ask you guys if you have any businesses that you think might profit from here to help encourage them to follow the application you can find that application on the link on my instagram bio and my instagram is at only child design all together with only one D between child and design. So, um, and if you have any artists that you would love to see here also, let me know, DM me and I listen to you guys. I have a lot of people asking to get Julia back and here she is. So. Yay! <laughs> um, that's, that, those are all the announcements for, <laughs> for today. Um, cool. Should we? Yeah, should we should we jump really quick into what we've done yesterday in XD because it was super fun and we've been playing around with the social media assets that we've created in so I've created these things in Illustrator and then I just copy paste them literally into into an XD file and here what we did is we created uh, auto animate animations so how that looks like is so here is an example uh, I have wired, wired them up. I've created a copy of the artboard. I have created some motion in it. So I have modified the second artboard. And now if I click, um, you know, if I pre preview this, this is what the post will look like animated. And it's super, super easy to, um, to do. If you want to learn how to do this yesterday, I've been describing this into detail on a couple of examples. So after the stream, if you want to rewatch yesterday's stream, feel free to do that. But yeah, so we've been uh, doing this one, uh, which I think super, super cool. We have some really amazing imagery that we got from Tiny Bodega and these typefaces and color palettes were just so, so amazing. By the way, again, I can use the, um, I can access the CC libraries here on the left side. 
inside my XD file, which I could also, I was also able to access in Illustrator. Lena shared um, that library with me. And um, yeah, so I'm able to access that really, really easily here as well. I recommend you guys to try XD out. It's a really, really cool addition if you are working on social media assets or if you're just a graphic designer and you want to create some motion. Um, super cool. Another example here where we have created some motion as well in the text. Super cool. I think, oh my gosh, again, I'm just so thankful for this imagery and for these uh, amazing colors and typefaces. It's just super, super cool. Then we have created another variation here. Let's play that one. Here we have this, um, you know, square turning around and, you know, also creating some tension. And those are all for the social media posts. And here we have some story examples as well. So um, let's play that. Then we have some color popping happening. We have some, um, we have some other interesting stuff happening here as well, where we have some rectangles moving around, creating tension. And um, yeah, those things you can totally use to also make, put the attention of the viewer of this post onto something specific. Because you are the designer, you have the power of, you know, bringing the attention of the person to whatever they need to see. And that's just a great addition to that. Here again, we have some, you know, text and images that pop into the post. And um, another example down here where the text is also popping in um, with the transparency where, um, you know, the first artboard had zero transparency and the second artboard suddenly was showing up this um, text in full color. Cool. Yeah, so this was super, super fun. Um, and let's just jump back to Illustrator. Um, so we, Lena has created actually those tiny, um, tiny uh, brand guidelines so that we have this little summary, which I think she did a really great idea. We have the logo here on uh, in black and in orange, which are the main brand colors. Let me jump into Tiny Bodega right here. We have the main uh, brand colors being orange and um, this really dark color. And um, she has also created a variation with this light color in the background of, or, um, on the orange background. And here we have the color palette, right? We have this, I'm, I'm thinking also maybe we should, um, we should kind of add this color, Lina, to the, to the color palette because it does appear in quite a few times, right? So we've been using that as well. Do that. Yeah. So um, yeah, guys, whenever you create a color palette, it's always really useful to have a very dark and a very light color. So the combination of this, you know, almost black or what is this? Let's see. Yeah, it's almost a black color. And um, with this light, you know, cream background creates a lot of contrast. So that's what you want to include into your color palette. And then we have the typography here. We've been going through this yesterday. This is just a really amazing typeface, Americana. Um, Lena, I think you've added that to their brand guidelines, right? That that was actually already on their brand guidelines. Cool. They awesome. just, I just compiled the file, but they have been already using that. And yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful font. I've, it is, it is, yeah. guys. Check it out. Then we have ITC Novarese regular. Novarese. <laughs> it's probably some Italian designer. <laughs> it sounds very Italian. Okay, then we have uh, ITC Novarese medium italic, um, which is amazing. An amazing typeface. Um, I can see some some other, you know, ways where we can um, where we can implicate this uh, this typeface as well in our posts which yesterday we were kind of mostly working with Americana, but this one is also really great. And yeah. now we have Halyard display book um, and Stolzl regular to use for hashtags and the handle. And we have these really cute two graphic elements that we are been also using yesterday. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So Lina has prepared a lot here and she's, um, you know, kind of created a summary of what we have to go through um, over the stream. And then we have the Instagram templates and then we have the animated posts that we've already created in XD. So today, uh, Lena is going to be using Illustrator and Photoshop to create um, some Giphys for them to use for the Instagram, right? 
Yes, correct. We will. And then uh, those Giphy's you can upload. I believe how it works is you create the graphic and then the Giphy you can upload on Giphy.com, which is actually the site. And then they will be accessible through the stories where you can add a GIF to your to your stories, right? Correct. You do have to apply for either a business or an artist account on Giphy to be able uh -huh. to access them through Instagram directly. But there's also, but you can also just download them to your phone and use them directly. But getting approved for an artist or brand account, it's fairly easy. So that that's definitely something to to consider. It's and it's free too. Cool. Yeah. So that's basically how it works. You create an Illustrator file, then you create a GIF in in Photoshop using uh, different frames and kind of creating a little movement or animation, and then you export it as a GIF file. You upload it onto Giphy.com, creating an artist or a business profile, and that's how you can access the uh, Giphys um, on Instagram Stories, where you can pick some of the GIFs. You probably all have used that once. Yeah, and I'm going to be working on social media optimization, which is basically the different saved story thumbnails and, um, you know, the, the thumbnails for the different uh, social media platforms that they're using and so on. We have the avatar, we have the covers for Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. We have the IG highlight covers, press, tiny recipes, brands and pantry goals and the fab icon. And Lina has prepared some copy for us to use. So really, really excited to jump into this. Let's do it. Okay, so let me just share my screen really quick. I'm going, so yesterday while Julia was working on those awesome animations, I was working on social media templates and I took a, a long time after the episode to to put everything together and and like get them get them all together for for client delivery so i just wanted to go through these very very quickly well not that quickly because i actually want to point out some some things that i considered that are very important at the time of you delivering templates to your clients so i just want to walk you guys through my process of delivering and exporting instagram posts or instagram templates so uh, these are the the, the um, designs that we came up with yesterday. And as you can see, uh, like I was saying yesterday in the episode, one really important thing to do is talking to your client and really seeing what kind of posts they're going to be needing, what kind of content they're going to be creating so that you can fit these templates to their, their content. So here one of the really like, key points for them is highlighting products and featuring um, brands so all of these templates are for that they can feature brands the things that they do when they feature brands they say the name the handle and they give like three um three qualities of the product because all of the products that they're featuring are allergen free so they they point that out so for instance gluten free dairy free or no refined sugars so that's very important for them and then having the handle to of the store so um that's one of the types of 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 posts that we did another thing that was important for them they're starting this program called tiny recipes so they're going to be featuring recipes so important to have a, a recipe template so these are the the recipe templates that we created and then um customer to uh, customer testimonials and then here are just some some templates for quotes for shorter quotes that they can use any sense and also i see those with the stars i can see them um being used during christmas time as well Yes, yeah. Yes. You have that mood, you know, and uh, it, it just reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. They can use it for their holiday content. And then here we have some some informational carousels, which um, are just those posts that you can scroll through. This one is image based, and then we have one that's more uh, text based. So after creating all of these, the next step is 
create, optimizing it for your client to use. So I have some best practices here for you guys um, that I always make sure to, to use and I'll show you how I implement this. So the first one is align all text. So make sure that the text is aligned the way you want it. You have to consider that the, the text that you're using to, to do your templates is not the one they're going to be using. So it might, for example, here, like this Hakuna Banana aligns perfectly. That's not going to be the case for, for, every, for every word, right? But I do want to make sure that every time, for example, here, I want to make sure that everything that they write remains centered. So I make sure that my text, it's centered aligned. So when they go and they um, change the name and they say behave, it's still going to be centered aligned, right? So um, same for everything that, you, that you're doing. So if you have something, let me see if there, so for example, here, this one is actually meant to be left aligned. So I have to make sure that that's left aligned in case they uh, want to change that, you know? So it's always going to be in the right placement. So that's one. Second, um, I like making sure that all of the images that I, that I use are masked. And the reason behind that is that when the client uses a different image, this assures that the design is going to remain intact. So. For example, if I had, if the client was changing these for these and they were just like setting it right there, it might change the, the proportions of the design. But if they get used to using the mask and they go into the mask and use it appropriately, then the, the, um, the design is always going to remain the same. And that's going to ensure that when the client posts, the 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 post you're not gonna get a heart attack because the design won't get affected and then important to embed all images if just because your client might not have those in their computer and you just want to make the the job easier the way that you do that i have already embedded all but it, let's say it wasn't embedded you will just click here where it says embed the fourth, create layers. So this is, I wanted to show you guys how I do this. For example, with this post. Um, yeah, let's see which one we can use. That would be a good reference for that. Okay, so let's use this one. So what I do is I always create a background And then oops, there's always going to be a background. There's always going to be images and you can say editable images. And that, why am I, why do I keep doing that? Okay. And then you can say, um, edit table text and then you will have a locked items, All right? So let's say you, so this, we know this is a background. This is not intended to change. So you can lock that, that um, layer. And then this is text that the client's going to be changing. So it goes into editable text. And then we have, this will go into editable text as well and then these will be locked items because I want to make sure that that stays in there oh an editable image sorry we have to put the end so I want to make sure that the locked items and the background don't move and that the client only changes the text and the images so I will give them these templates with these layers locked. So um, another thing, and I, I have a, a quite, I'm going to answer your question, Manuel. I, I see that I, we have it in here on the bonus. Um, so 
after doing these, you just need to make sure that your client have all the fonts installed in their computer. I have had times where I've seen the, the post go up and it happened that I think the client changed computers and then all of a sudden the post were going with another another font and I was freaking out. I was like, this is not the, it was like Arial or something super generic. Oh my God, this is, this is crazy. And also you have to make sure that there is licensing. So whenever you share, when you, whenever you share the, uh, the fonts with them, they have to license them when they, when they're using them. Right. So you can't just, you know, buy the typeface for yourself and then let the client use it. That's, it's not how it works. Right. Everybody needs, every business needs their own license, right? Yes. They, they all need to have their own lines licenses. So, um, another thing to avoid <laughs> what happened to me is make sure that when you when you deliver your templates you also deliver jpeg references of all of them so that the client can see how the fonts actually look and how everything should be looking when they open their own file so and then a bonus and here's your 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 answer manuel if your client doesn't have adobe creative cloud and not all clients do a good option is to transfer these to Adobe XD because there is a free version that they could use to do that. And it's fairly intuitive too for them. Um, luckily, our client will have an Adobe subscription <laughs> because that's part of the here to help effort. Adobe is kind enough to give them a one year subscription for, for Adobe. So, And our uh, client is also familiar with Illustrator, right? I, I assume she is because there there's a lot of, of things that she has been creating that are probably done in Illustrator or similar mm -hmm. photos. No. So uh, after you have done all of these best practices to prepare your templates, you just have to export everything. I mean, you, you save the document, send them the document, but also remember that we have to make sure that we give them a JPEG um, reference so a quick way to to do this is export export for screens and then you're going to select all of your all of your posts and then we're going to go here and really quick um export for screens just optimizes your artwork so it's you know, it's not too large, it's it's not too um, small, it's just perfect for the screen. So it's actually, if you're exporting social media assets, something like that, that's perfect. Um, that's a perfect way to export them. Yes, definitely don't use this for assets that are gonna get printed. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the the best way to do, to do it for social media. So what do you do? You can, select many different things. I like selecting a width and make sure that the width is 1080 and then the format is JPEG 100 and you just click export and then a folder is going to get created with all of them. So you can have them is super quick obviously i don't have my artboards named but if you have your artboards named then you get everything already with the with the name and it's the easiest and fastest way to export yeah so yeah that oh, and another way is guys cc libraries <laughs> you can share a cc library with your client as well so right now lena lena do you want to quickly show how you added me to the library i think we went through that yesterday but lena can also put those graphics into the library and then the client will be able to access the templates as well that's also possible yeah, so let's say I wanted to save this as a graphic. I would just select my my entire graphic and then add these, add it as a graphic. Mm -hmm. And then this graphic, whenever my computer is done thinking, <laughs> it will appear here and then you can just drag it and, and paste it in there. So it's super easy and then you can add your client in your library by just typing the email that they're using for their Adobe 
subscription, make sure that you ask them because it might not be the same email that you're communicating with them, but you can just add them in there and they'll have access to all of these and it's going to make their life easier. Yeah. So, so now actually what Lina could do is she could add all of these assets to the library <laughs> and then I will be able to pull them in into my file as well. I think that would be really cool if you could do that because <laughs> <laughs> I think I will have to access some of them. <laughs> okay. Or I can send you the file too. That works as well. Yeah. Because we have to go by one by one. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, do that. I'm I'm fine with that. While okay. I do that, why don't we go into your screen, Julia? And yeah, and sure. we let's do it. and we start on social media optimization. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so Lina made a good list here of what we're going to be working with. So here we have our avatar covers, IG highlight. So I just took this whole text and I copied this into a file. Um, so we have some IG highlight covers. So it comes for press, tiny recipes, brands and pantry goals. Then we have our avatar image which is basically the logo that they can put on several uh, social media channels. Then we have the covers for Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter that we can uh, create here as well. And as I was saying, I can just simply access the things that Lena has uh, been putting into the library by just pulling them in. So um, she has pulled in this post, right? Um, now it looks like an image, but I can also embed it and I can access all the different parts of the vector, um, you know, the vector um, assets of it and so on here. I think this is, uh, yeah, I can still edit this text. So really, really cool and a really cool way to share templates with clients. Totally recommend. All right. Yeah, let's get started. And I think what we can do is um, we can decide for some um, for some elements that we're going to put into the avatar. And I believe here we have uh, the little small uh, version of the logo, which um, I think is really useful for us. So I'm going to use that one right here, command and C, and it's vectorized so I can literally command and V, place it anywhere and I can resize it um, as much as I want. Here we have a little a thing that we need to adjust which is the circle that we have here, it's not outlined yet. So it's acting as a line. So that means if I scale this up, the line width would stay, would stay the same. So it's just like an outline, basically. It will stay the same. That means if the logo gets bigger, the line gets you know thinner and thinner and it's not proportionate. So to scale things proportionally with, with logos like this and um, that have you know lines that are not outlined yet, um, what we want to do is we want to go and I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see what exactly is happening. So I'm going to go, go into object, uh, path and outline stroke. And now you can see the stroke is basically going around this shape. So whenever now, uh, whenever I resize this, uh, this logo, it's going to stay in the same proportion, right? The, the circle is going to always have the same width of the stroke. So that's what I want to do. And then I'm going to group this command and G so that I can easily move this around. And I'm going to move this into our avatar and I'm going to place this inside here. I think this is a really cool, uh, you know, that's why it's very necessary to create uh, logo versions for different situations. Because right now, if we would have put this logo in here, which is actually the, um, the main logo that we've been using, if we would have put this in here, it would be pretty tiny. We would probably not really see it once we zoom in, we zoom out. Um, it could be, it could be. In this case, it's actually a really good, good well legible typeface. But sometimes logos can get really, really long. So I don't recommend doing that. Instead, we're going to be using this one, but we're going to be using that color that um, uh, I have been working with earlier, which is this darker tone that Lena has been uh, also using a lot. And I'm going to add it to our color library. So I'm going to click plus here and text fill color. Now I'm going to add that color to our color library. And I'm going to use that color on here as well. 
Cool. And as a background, I think what we can do, we can do some cool stuff. We can experiment with it. We can create some variations and let's see what the client will, uh, will like. And what I want to do now is I want to create a little rectangle, like a little background for this. And uh, I'm going to select this orange, which is one of the main colors, arrange, send to back. So now we can actually experiment with the colors a little bit. And what I like to do for that also is I like to look back at the brand guidelines. So uh, we have here, uh, we have this logo being used on uh, in white on or this cream color on orange background. So I might consider doing that. So let's go back into our thing here and I'm going to use that off white. So this could be a variation of the avatar. We can also use an image as a background. Let's see if that will work for us. Um, it might work, it might not work. Let's see if that's going to be something that we can use here. Um, otherwise, what, what you want to keep in mind for the avatar is that you want it to be well legible. You want it to be like really, really nice and legible. So let's see if I'm going to send it to the back, if that will still be visible if I am going to create a little transparency here. So let's see, oh, that could work. But um, I feel like this brand is so bold. Um, I feel like we need to create some, you know, some shape graphics maybe for the background. So, um, or we can just keep it simple, which yeah. might, might be better in this case, but um, Lina, what do you think for the avatar? Should we just take the logo? Or should we create some background? Um, I, would, I would say avatar, definitely keep it simple because we're going to be seeing it at a very small scale. So yeah, maybe it would be better to, to have it small. Yes. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, let's, let's try it out. Okay, so um, let's see also what, what else we're going to come up with for the other assets. So now um, to center this inside the artboard, I'm going into my properties. By the way, guys, if you don't know the properties panel, <laughs> I really recommend, uh, you know, activating it. And if you go to window and activate properties, the properties panel always shows you only the tools that you need to know or you need to access for the specific object that you're using. So right now I'm, I'm selecting the logo, which is a graphic element. It's a vector element. So I will be able to align it. I'll be able to use the pathfinder and change the appearance. But if I'm selecting text, I will, I will be able to access additional options like character styles, uh, paragraph styles, and so on. So keep that in mind, uh, properties panel, I would say is a must. And here on the right side, I set it up as um, properties, libraries, and then Adobe color themes, just because I love some color inspiration. And you can just pull in colors from those color themes into your work. So super cool, love using that. And now we have this side panel here that comes with color, transparencies, brushes, um, swatches, a bunch of stuff that's kind of an addition to um, to this very simple, uh, you know, uh, simple, simple art, art, how do you say, work setup. <laughs> Let's do that. And here at the top, there is this little button where you can uh, select the different, the different presets that you want to use. So let's say you're doing typography, you can, uh, you can select typography. And if you're just, I'm just using essential, essentials classic, although they're a little bit modified in my case. And here on the left side, if you click on the three dots, you'll be able to pull in some new tools into your panel here as well. So you will be able to modify that one as well. Just make yourself comfortable because you will have to spend so much time in, <laughs> in Illustrator once you start. So um, yes, that's a good way of seeing it. It's like <laughs> space, <laughs> make it comfortable. Cozy and comfy. <laughs> exactly. Make everything accessible that you want to be accessible. Make everything unaccessible that you're not using anyway. So for the covers, I'm going to, first of all, command and to lock these um, avatar images because I'm only going to be working with this background. And here, I think I will need some imagery and I will need also some, um, some text. So I'm just going to pull in some images. 
um, that will also make sense. And I think I'm going to take one of the quotes that we've been using. And that one, um, I think is really great. Add some color to your pantry, command and C. Actually, let me just copy and paste all of this and bring it in here. Wait, oops. How did I end up in XD? <laughs> I accidentally clicked on, uh, on Okay, so let's see how we can play with this. Maybe we can just, you know, take this as a certain um, inspiration. So, um, I also can... added, sorry, Julia, I added the, um, the file into the, into our folder in case you want to use. Oh, perfect. I will, I will do that. I will take a look at that. By the way, guys, um, if you're working in teams, if you're working for an agency, the go-to, um, you know, sharing files, especially sharing big files or a lot of images or, um, sharing files with clients is uh we all work with dropbox so i know i don't actually know any alternative here do you know lena if there is any other professional altern alternative to sharing files i yeah th there's a bunch but they're like mostly like there's like a lot of servers that people use or maybe if you're working for a big agency they have their own server but dropbox is definitely universal language i would say yeah totally <laughs> I would agree with that. I think uh, I think Dropbox is really cool. And um, I remember working for an agency in San Francisco and that's all they would use uh, literally, you know, just just Dropbox and um, you can easily create links so that clients can access them. Anybody can literally access it. So yes, yes. No, I, I love Drop Dropbox is my favorite. I use Google Drive sometimes. Because a lot of my clients use Google Drive, I don't like it as much as yeah. as Dropbox because you can't necessarily preview the files in there, and it's yeah. a pain. Our uh, we transfer. It's also a good alternative for sending and receiving files, but it doesn't store them in there. So that that's another one to check out because it's free too. Yeah. So super cool. Yeah, Lina, I don't, I can't really see the file here yet. On the, um, on the Dropbox? Yeah. On there, if you go. <laughs> so if you guys want to see this, this is some insider here, but I do have a folder here called Tiny Bodega Assets. And then what you usually do is, so yesterday I've created the animations. I have them all in one folder, right? But then we have the brand assets being fonts, being um, different illustrator files, PDF files that will help us design. So they're actually the working files, right? And then we have some client references. So we got some inspiration um, uh, for, from the client. Oh, by the way, this is a really cool brand here, Poppy. Really love them. Um, so yeah, so the client provided a bunch of stuff, also photography. So photography is really important. I just pulled in all the photography and saved it in my libraries. That's how I usually do it. It's actually just, you know, just pulling in into a file and then just putting it all into your library. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, I can't really see Lina's file yet. Maybe oh, it's uploading. Inside the tiny bodega assets. So yeah. it's in any of the folders next to the um, social media optimization one so in that same level that's weird i sent you a link oh, okay send me the link <laughs> i sent it to you on zoom do you want me to send it to you on that's fine that's fine that's fine that's okay. gonna be good what are you all up to what are you guys all working on we'd love to know yes, megan is joining right now so hi megan hi <laughs> Okay. Just to recap, we're working on social media branding for Tiny Bodega. Yeah. Super cool. Let's see. Okay. And I'm currently working on the covers for Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And I'm, yeah. Okay. I got it, Lena. I got it. I got it. Thank you. So weird that it's cool. not. Yeah, I know. I know. Sometimes. We're talking about you and <laughs> how would you say i'm like come on dropbox we're talking good about you and your yeah right <laughs> okay okay i'm just going to ignore that there's some jpegs that i'm missing 
Oh. That's fine. All I need is the graphics. I see we have some uh, some of that we've been working on yesterday. Lena has created some. Oh yeah, cool. This is also cool. Love that. Have you outlined all of that? Oh no, never mind. It's not outlined. Okay, cool. No. Perfect. All right. I think I'm going to reuse some of these star symbols. And guys, cre you know, creating creating branded guidelines is all about reusing assets. It's all about um, it's all about reusing assets in in ways where it makes sense, right? So let me just use that here. Maybe we can work with this. Yes, that's why I love brand guidelines. That's like yeah. the important part of your work because it's going to make your life so much easier. Your life and your client's life too. Yeah, that's true. Okay, let's use that blue color that you've been using also. Cool. Oh, and your team is working on the daily creative challenge. Yay, cool. Guys, by the way, if you're new to Illustrator, um, if you want to learn Illustrator, this is your chance. Go and um, participate in the daily creative challenges. And to access those, you can go on to um, behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Maybe the mods can uh, post a link into, uh, into the chat. That would be great. So here you will be able to see the challenge that we've been working on today. It's called custom texture. And we've taken an image and created a texture out of that. How cool is that? And then you can use that texture to create presentations or to apply it to different graphics. So um, check it out. So let's actually unlock all of these things and I'm going to place this on top. Arrange, bring to front. And I also want to see how the avatar looks like in context. So what I want to do is right now, I'm just going to copy the avatar um into the into the into this artboard because i want to see how that looks like together arrange bring to front okay yeah i think the orange might not be the right solution but let's see if i remove it we are left with a green green is also a great color maybe green and orange will be working together here no never mind it's all about experimenting. <laughs> That's what I always say when I'm trying you know, like, for sure. Right. Um, okay. I'm just thinking about removing the circle. Maybe can we remove the circle Lina from the logo or should we just keep it? No, we can remove it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how that works because I feel like that might give it a little bit more openness and it kind of open it to the rest of the of the context here cool love it mm -hmm. looks cool that photography is amazing i really what did you say I, the photography they have is amazing i really yeah, that's true they, what they're doing yeah, I, I want to put some into the cover pages because I think I think it's just really, really amazing. I'm just I'm just indecisive because it's all looking so great. <laughs> and I'm going to be doing some Giphy stickers while you do that. Yeah, let us know when, when you want to uh, jump onto your screen. Um, OK, well, let's we can do that. We can be jumping back and forth okay yeah let's do it sure yeah. okay so um yeah wh whenever you want when you tell me when you're when you <laughs> on a break and <laughs> <laughs> no i'm actually i'm actually fine i'm just uh, you know trying to arrange the different objects and see what's you know what makes the most sense here um but you can really like i can really just play around here for a very long time so <laughs> let's let's jump i want actually i want people to see how you are you know, creating them from scratch, because I think we had a lot of interest in, uh, you know, how to create a Giphy um, or a GIF and, um, you know, just starting from scratch. Where do you design them? Where do you animate them? How do you animate them? So maybe we can jump into your screen just to see how you design them. And Let then um, we can jump back into mine while you're designing. And then we'll jump back into yours when you're animating. 
perfect let's let's do it let's jump in here and i will show you guys i i have already started making some some comps for the stickers and um so th these are the stickers that the client requested she wanted one that said gluten free one that said dairy free one that said vegan one that said soy free and female founded so could you send those to me as well i i, I think i might use them in the um <laughs> in the um in the cover in, in the covers for facebook linkedin and twitter i think that would be cool so you guys will see magic happen because i'm gonna just add them to the library since this is <laughs> a little easier first of all what i'm gonna do i'm gonna um i'm gonna expand all of these mm -hmm. so you make sure you don't have any problems and i will just go by one by one and add it to the library Yay. and who will see these pop up in julia's library yeah, because i had those stars and they were actually saying the same but these look so much more fun i feel like they will be way nicer here in this case perfect so let me let me just add them they're almost all there i just need one more Cool. So, this nice. tool really helps with collaboration. Like, yeah. I, can, I didn't <laughs> have to go save the file, upload it to Dropbox, and it just like with a click, she now will have hers as well. Let me know when they yes. pop out in there. I got them already. I got them. See? Perfect. Super cool. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. So for gift creation, one thing that I that I try to focus on it's making them simple because if there's too much going on, gifts you're usually going to be seeing them. If you're doing gift stickers, you're usually going to be seeing them fairly small. So I I try to make them like easy to read and simple. So I made these, and let's experiment first with with these ones. So when you're doing gifts, when when you animate the GIFs, think of it as two or more images that shift in something. So you have your first um, your first rendition of the image, and then you're going to have a second rendition that has something different. That can be a change. It can be a change in color, can be a change in position, a change in shape, or a change in sizing. Or you can just like add another element that pops in and out. So those are like the five parameters that I am thinking of when I design when I design GIFs. So for example, for this one, if we made a turn, then that would be a change in position that would make these um, let me this thing just turn like this, right? So that's one thing we can do and let's let's select turn for this one and then we will change for let's see if you guys have any suggestions of what we can do with them also let me know in in the comments uh, I think this might be a good one for, to be turning as well this one maybe it's more of a shift in shape i think that would be a good one like if we make it do like a gooey gooey thing i think it could be it could be cool so um let me i'm first i'm just adding them to artboards to make sure that they stay in the same dimension so that when i transfer them in into photoshop they're all gonna be centered and it's gonna be easier for me to make sure that they're one on top of each other so let's see i'll just then for vegan maybe we can use a shift in sizing let's see okay um simon yeah. is saying i love cc libraries yay simon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's my people <laughs> 
Uh, well, yesterday, if you guys were not here, we asked each other if we were a an Adobe software, which software would be would we be? And Julia said Adobe libraries. So, <laughs> so Simon, you just fell in love with Julia. <laughs> yeah, I wish, I wish there was just like just one app, like just one, and then you can switch between modes, like maybe. Uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever, whatever, but all being just one platform. That would be so cool. Yeah. Maybe. You can just, where you can just like randomly start designing something and then you can get into really professional animation and film, you know, film editing and photo editing. That would be cool. But it needs a lot of stuff like that needs a lot of power. So I'm not sure if our computers will be able to handle any of that. <laughs> yeah. Mine, probably not. <laughs> it's already struggling. Let's see. Um, okay, so I am just going to switch here. I'm going to add this into Photoshop. And then... Super cool! So what we're gonna do? What is what about saying Spark is actually very useful? Yeah, yeah, totally. You can also create a brand in Spark, which um, allows you to access all the brand assets on the go. So you can literally make a whole, uh, you know, create a whole brand which comes with colors, typefaces, logos, and then you can literally on the go create your posts. I actually do have that on my phone as well. Um, maybe I can show that to you guys real quick. It's really, really cool. It's called um, Adobe Spark Post. And I literally can access my branded posts over here. That's how I actually make my posts. So here, let's say I'm, um, I'm planning an Adobe Live session. I can literally access my post here and I can just add some text in that exact type, typeface that, um, that I want it to be. And then um, I can also go in here and I can add add my logo, add my different stuff. And I can also access libraries from my phone, <laughs> which is crazy. I mean, crazy technology these days. You know, we are like always constantly like connected and doing things. Like everything's possible now. How crazy is that? Let me see. So right now I have my assets in in photoshop and i just have these two as different layers so i have one layer that it's the text and one layer that it's the sticker because i don't want this text turning for this one i just want the um, i just want the the um, star turning so what i'm going to do i'm just gonna copy that layer and i'm going to turn it around and I'm holding my shift key so I make sure that it's a certain degree turn and it doesn't go past it and it's going to be the same. So I copy that second one and then again, command T to transform, shift and it rotate. So my next one, command T, shift and rotate and then and then T, shift and rotate. And I can see that that's my last one because they're all filled in now. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm just gonna hide all of them and then go down here to my timeline. I create a video timeline. And, and you can see there's two uh, ways of video timeline for GIFs. I like using this one, that it's like easier. You can just see it one by one what you're doing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide this first one and I'm just going to activate the second one. And then again, I'm going to activate the third one, hide the second one and the next one, activate the next and so on. And I'll just do that with all of them. And then I'm going to set my timing to 0.2. Let's see how, what that does when I preview it. It's turning. Oh, you know what we should do is uh, we should move ourselves to the other side of the screen so that people can see the timeline actually. Because right now I feel like we're covering it. 
So it'll be cool. Paco. <laughs> if she can move to the other side. Um, it will be nice. Yay, there we are. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool, yeah. Yes, yeah, so timeline actually just shows the different the different layers, right? So you're basically playing from one layer to the other, right? Exactly, exactly. So you select like in this layer, for example, you can see that I have this one activated and then all of the other ones unactive and then so on and so on. I will just, so there's just one layer activated per square per square of the timeline. So that's when you can see uh, what you're doing. So this one's already turning. Let's do, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to want to make this artboard, um, the canvas smaller, mm -hmm. just because I don't want a lot of, of white space around my GIF. And to export GIFs, you can just do file, export you're going to do save for web and now when you're here you want to make sure that your colors are set to the highest which is 256 and then matte it's going to be set to none this uh, this is important when you're doing gifts for 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 instagram stickers because this will get rid of that white line that you sometimes see in your GIFs. So if you have been creating GIFs and you've seen like a tiny white line around them, it's because you're not checking math none. So make sure to do that. Make sure that it's a GIF and make sure that it's looping forever. So those are the important things to hit. And then you hit save and you can save your GIF as we're going to name it soy free. Make sure everything's fine, safe. And you're good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to check in here that my GIF is working when I preview it. And it's turning. Okay, so up to the next one let's see what we can do and i'm gonna um let's see all right yeah we have some conversation going uh around spark taylor is saying just just discovered spark last week really cool awesome I like Spark for making quick birthday cards. Yay! And also Christmas coming up. By the way, there is a new feature where you can make a, um, something in Spark and export it for print. So you can actually make really cool prints with that exporting as PDF and then, uh, you know, creating a really nice high quality Christmas gift card or Christmas cards. Um, yeah. What's a good size for a gift? Isis is asking Lena. I think that's a great question. That that is a good question, <laughs> actually. I, it would depend on when you're using it, but I I imagine that for Instagram, it's probably smaller the better. I would say like around four hundred pixels, but I would have to to verify that. I think I'm saving these ones really big because I rather have them big and then having the client be able to make them smaller if they need to than making them smaller and then having them struggle with that but yeah that's a good question i will google that when <laughs> whenever julia is doing her 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 thing and let you know exactly what the best sizing is but the reality like the the, the thing that i read actually is giphy will resize them for you so if you're doing them via giphy it doesn't matter there's no like you can just throw it in there and then they will resize it for you to fit the the platform so that might be so it's whatever you want <laughs> that's that's the what that's the answer let's see okay so for this one i want to change the shape and what i'm thinking these i just made with the zigzag um, effect so i'm going to go to my window appearance and I will see this and when I click here 
I'm going to see that I use the zigzag, right? So what I'm going to do to change the shape, I'm going to come from the original shape and then just change a bit and see what it does. So I can either go smaller or I can go bigger. I think bigger might work. So it's very, like a, a very small change, but it will do like a little movement. I don't want this to be too, super intricate because I, wa I wanna keep it simple. The design is fairly simple. I have some other ones that I wanna do that might be a bit more, more intricate. But for these ones, I want to keep them super simple so it doesn't distract too much because it's just meant to be like a little sticker. So, um, so 1417. Cool. PNG, always very important. Always when you're using, doing GIF, GIFs, Save your images as PNGs because you want to make sure that they have tra a transparent background. So this one is female funded. So let's come down here. I'm gonna have my. And for these ones, I'm wondering if, like, if we were using XD to make it a bit more um, smooth, because this will just like do a jumpy switch, but XD might do a smoother transition. So that's another way to to experiment. I have never created GIFs on on XD. Have you? It's not, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> you can't really export um, the files as much as you can export them, let's say in Photoshop or in After Effects. The only way to record the, um, you know, the animation is through recording the preview. Um, so that's the only way. And there is no way to create a PNG without a background, right? So, and also you cannot export that animation actually in any other way. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that that will be one thing that people request a lot and um, that that will be something they will adjust. Yes, that would be the dream. <laughs> can, I, can, I wish that, can I wish that for Christmas? <laughs> Adobe, come Dear on. Dear Adobe XD. <laughs> Can we please create a GIF export for my auto uh, animate animations? That would be amazing. And if you guys have any other ways of creating GIFs, let us know. Because I know there, like every designer has their own workflow. And I'm always super interested in hearing how other people create things. Yeah, I'm sure you can also create them in After Effects as well. Yes. So, yeah. Love to know. I'd love to know how you guys are doing it. Yeah, let us know. Um, okay, so we have none. Ever. If you guys want to tune in onto my screen so I can show you guys what I'm up to. It's actually looking pretty fun right now. <laughs> um, so I've been actually using all these badges and uh, putting some characteristics into, into the into the uh, covers so we have the female founder vegan soy free dairy free right um do we have any more actually i might have oh yeah we have one more okay maybe i can also include that um and gluten free so i thought it was it was really cool to kind of implement those because they just look so fun and also it works super well with the slogan that i have here add some color to your pa uh, pantry right and then we, once, once we're talking about color, we're also talking about all of these badges that are here. And here in the background, I've taken an image of how their subscription pack looks like. And it also kind of reflects the logo so, so that you can actually see the connection here. I thought it 
was fun to kind of play with a, you know, with a, a blocky color background and combine it with, with a photo. I couldn't really place the text on top of a photo because it wouldn't be well legible. That's the reason why I kind of decided to create this blockiness and block out some, some of the photo to put the text on top. And I feel like that will work pretty well for the brand. And here um, I did I did basically the same thing. I just resized the things. And one of the things that I've, I really love to play is that um, you have those specific, you know, that you have a specific placement of the avatar and so the, the profile image basically. And here I want to play with that so that the line is actually adjusted like it's supposed to be like that, you know. So this line is actually just connecting to the avatar image, just mm -hmm. like here. Yeah. So it's kind of creating this line and uh, really clean, uh, blocky uh, design. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> actually just, you know, just um, experimenting and placing things around and seeing how they can how they can work in, in you know, different settings. And I feel like this design was, um, you know, the most uh, fitting. I love it. I really like it. I think that's that's a great idea too of making the the avatar ma match that. I like that. The only the only difficult thing about that is um, making it fit all <laughs> all um, like all different scenarios so mobile yeah. tab that, that that's gonna be hard but I, i'm sure it's gonna look good too when it's not we can i think so that's why you put this here right so we have um visible on desktop visible on mobile so we will need to add some more oh my my dog just broke into the office <laughs> he wants <laughs> to say hi to my dog <laughs> please bring him <laughs> He's a, she's a big puppy. <laughs> so cute. Okay, hi. <laughs> I think it's her first time on the stream, actually. <laughs> she's always very curious when I'm streaming. She's always coming in. Uh, she's opening the door, actually, and she's coming in and just, uh, you no, know, just like coming in like, like she's the boss. <laughs> Featured design. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> She is really cute. How old is she? Um, she's a year and three months now. Mm. So yeah, she's still a baby. But you know, dogs they never grow up, so <laughs> so big. Oh my god. So cute. Yay! <laughs> Woodwell is saying whoop. <laughs> yeah, she's a large doggo uh doggo. <laughs> Paloma is saying she broke in. Yeah, she literally broke in because I did lock the door, but she always does that. <laughs> so gotta live with it, gotta live with it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna change this avatar here as well to whatever I have here. These two colors work really well. Um and we've been reusing them also. So I'm going to use them here as well. Because why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, if somebody asks you why, you just say, why not? <laughs> Don't do the thinking. <laughs> when the client asks, asks you, so why is this? Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the new, that, that is the, the best advice we have for you guys. <laughs> if a client asks you anything, just be, why not? <laughs> exactly why not okay cool yeah i'm liking this i just need to consider these things that you were mentioning here so things that are visible on mobile i feel like we need to move in these objects a little bit closer to the center so i'm just going to select all of them and i'm just going to move them all to the center and that also would work i would say Let's see. Let's see what this is going to be. I say that all the time. <laughs> Some of you have seen streams where I'm just actually designing. Um, that's something that I always say. Let's see what this is going to be. Um, like, for example, when I do those improvisation streams on my YouTube, um, that's always one of the things that I say the most. <laughs> Let's see what this is going to be. 
These are those are so much fun, Julia. The I stickers? No, no, no. Your streams, the improvisation. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those those are fun. Yeah, I if mean, you have not seen them, you guys should go to her YouTube channel. Obviously, after these, but <laughs> and and check them out because they're really fun. You just pick a random thing the day of, right? Yeah. So it's called it's called. Um, the branding wheel of fortune so i let people from my instagram actually decide what they want to see me improvise the branding for and so they would send me i would send a, basically like a questionnaire on instagram and on my stories and people would submit topics let's say chocolate brand beer brand uh, i don't know popcorn brand and um I would put them on like a wheel of fortune and i would have 12 different topics i would not prepare to, for anything and um, then I will just uh, start the live stream on the YouTube and then turn the Wheel of Fortune and whatever topic, um, you know, I get, that's what I have to work with. And I will have to develop a, br a whole brand um, in only like an hour, one and a half hours. It always depends. Sometimes I'm like, okay, let me just work a little bit longer on this because this is not done yet. And in five minutes is going to be so much better. So yeah, it's, it's cool to work um, in time limitations like that because... Um, you can actually kind of create the system for yourself, you know, that my, and my system is usually, um, you know, I'm creating an inspiration board. And then from there, I'm finding the different characteristics that I found inspirational. And uh, from there, I'm starting finding a color palette, different shapes, and so on. So there is actually like a whole I have like a whole system now of how I approach uh, an improvisation like that. And improvisation is also useful when you um, when you have to create a branding, but you don't have time. So you have to do it in a very short time. <laughs> and you still have to satisfy your client. <laughs> so it's, it's fun. It's that, fun. That's so cool. And very brave of you to do it so quickly too. <laughs> and also that kind of um, makes you less shy to improvise. It gives you confidence that you can just create something in a short period of time. And yeah, yeah just makes you less scared of the outcome, right? Yeah, I, I bet. And it if also- If you're not that scared of the outcome, it also helps you create better. Yeah, say. yeah, that's true. And I'm sure that's also helped you with your other clients. Because you already have that system that's quicker and like nailing it in, in a short period of time. Yeah, I guess. I guess yeah, it is it is definitely helpful. Just improvisation in general. I know some designers they're they're doing stuff like um, you know, presenting in front of large audience, like they're doing like comedy on the side just because they're learning how to speak, how to um, translate emotions and that can all be really really helpful as a designer for your you know for your presence as a designer Oof, yeah that's that I think that would be my my biggest fear of all <laughs> standing up in a comedy club <laughs> yeah but I feel like once you do it once you'll you will not be scared of it anymore yeah that's true those I used to I used to not be like I used to not be scared to go out on a stage and present something in front of a large audience. But then I started being scared again. But I'm not scared in sitting in here in front of the camera and pretending <laughs> it's you guys, which is a little bit weird, but um ah, it's just I don't know. It's just a matter of practice, I would say. Yes. Yay. Oh, Jessica is asking what what's my dog's name? So she's a golden doodle and usually golden doodles are um, light brown, but she turned out white. So her dad was, I believe, completely black, black poodle, and her mom was completely white um, golden retriever. So they come in also in different colors. So she, she turned out white and that's why we call her Blondie. <laughs> <laughs> she's so cute. And I also like the band. also love the band well, yeah today we're gonna have a an artist spotlight voodoo bell is just reminding us about that it's gonna be she i checked out her work it's amazing really really excited about showing her work on on our stream so stay yeah. for that 
And also guys, if you have any artist that you want to submit to have an artist spotlight, do that. Maybe Boudou can give more details on how to, how to submit people. But if you have anyone that you think would be a great fit for this, please don't hesitate. Cool. Lina, those stickers are super cool. They're super fun. Oh, I'm glad you like them. Yeah, it's fun to play around with them here. <laughs> cool. It's all right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of arranging them based on feeling. <laughs> feeling? <laughs> Yeah, based on feeling, honestly, because um, it's it's all about kind of balancing out the white space, right? But also, I don't want to cover the logo in this image because it's quite important. So um, you kind of find this, try to find this balance of showing some of the image, but also placing the objects and not covering the logo. Yeah. Yes. No. That's Pretty cool. All right. So Julia, what would you say your the main components of your of your process as a designer are? You know, it's like some people are very very heavily driven by design rules. Some people are more driven by intuition or just by feeling. What's what's your case? I feel like in the beginning I was very driven by the design rules like here I would I will make sure that this is uh, has uh, like the golden proportions, so five to three. Um, so I would use that a lot, and then try to make things symmetric. Also, that will help a lot to create something, uh, you know, something cool. But I feel like after a certain time, you develop an eye for things and develop an eye for lights, light and darkness in an image, and you want to balance that to make it um, to make it easy to understand and, and also comfortable for the eye, right? Because right now, if I zoom in, I will see white space over here, white space over here. And how can I balance that? And that intuition, I feel like it's not something that you really learn, it's something that comes from experience. So um, now I'm also gonna adjust this a little bit. <laughs> Think little details that I can uh, always adjust. And that intuition will help you in the long run. But in the beginning, it's it's useful to use design rules, stuff like that. See, now this is a little bit more balanced around this area because I have, uh, you know, adjusted the size and I also increased the size of this vegan thing. So it kind of matches the curving here. And here it's not really balanced yet. There's too much space around there. So I guess I'm gonna increase that one as well. And I'm gonna pull this one up here as well and maybe increase the size. And now it's it's a little bit more, you know, it flows better, let's say. Here, I feel like this female found it is a little too close to the text and it's, it feels a little bit uncomfortable, you know, when things are too close together, but then there is also a lot of space. So around here, there's a lot of space, but that one is a little too close. So I'm just gonna pull it a little bit to the side. And then again, so we have this curve here. We want it to kind of guide you, guide your eye towards the text, right? So we want that to kind of match. So I'm kind of gonna turn, turn it just a little bit. Um, it's kind of like pointing towards the text. That's what we kind of want to achieve. And things interact with each other. So I read, I see this element first and then, aha, it's pointing onto the text and the text is flowing around here. And, while looking at this, I also see that element because it matches with the shape, right? So here we have this curve going up and here we have this curve going up. So it looks like these elements, you know, have a connection. And then once we see this connection, our eye does it very intuitively. We don't even have to think about that. It just does it automatically. And once we kind of flow around this area, we'll be able to see that. And once we flow around that area, we'll be able to see this which I think we might even, you know, exchange the spots. That, that one is kind of, um, the shape is very pointy and 
it can get a little bit uncomfortable sometimes if it's too close to something. So if I would put it too close to the text, it will be like the this shape is kind of you know picking uh, on the on the on the text, which I don't want to achieve. So um, here again, it's all about balance and you know balancing things out so it's comfortable for the eye. And there is a lot of color here, so the challenge here will be also to balance the colors. I could not put this blue on top of this blue because you won't be able to see the round shape anymore. And I could not put this green over here because the background is already green and there would not be enough contrast. And same thing with the dairy-free dairy one. I could not put it on top of the logo. Just in general, avoid covering logos or parts of the logo because now let's say I, let's say I will put this vegan sign over here. It would read tiny bow. What's tiny bow, right? Mm -hmm. So you want the name to be well legible here and um it's just it's just a, a bunch of different um aspects you know to, to designing stuff like this yes and also like she didn't she because this is a um a beginning stage company she didn't have like a formal brand guidelines but usually if you're working on a bigger brand you will get those brand guidelines that assign a specific clear space for the logo and things like that so that's also very important to consider while you're designing any types of, of assets, like Julia says. That's correct. And that's why I'm, I'm leaving a good amount of space around here as well and around here, so that the logo still have enough white space to be recognized and to be well legible. Right? So those are the small thoughts that I kind of have during designing things. And here we also have to consider that there will be a border once it's seen on the mobile, mobile device. So we'll have the sides of this not visible anymore. So we'll have to kind of test how will that look like. So let me just take these two. I think those will represent it pretty well. So let's try to pull this on top of that. Okay, so we will have some of the elements being very close to the edge. And this one has kind of a lot of space here. So I'm going to move it a little bit like so. So that that's how you can kind of preview the design when um, when you when you pre when you see it on the mobile phone. And every website is also different, so you have to consider all of these things and arrange all the objects. Yes. Oh, Julia, eh, Joaquin is asking, how do we add fonts to to the library? Yeah, it's very easy. So I'm just selecting an object with text and the text should not be outlined. The text should actually be live text. And then we can click the little plus sign. Um, let me just quickly resize that so you can see. Uh, like so. Here we have this little plus sign at the bottom. Uh, let me zoom in here. It, that says add elements. Hopefully you guys can see this. And that allows you to add character style or paragraph style or text. Uh, but we want to add the character style because that's what describes what the typeface is and so on and the size of the typeface. So you click the plus and that's how you add, um, you know, the typeface to the libraries. Hopefully that was answering the question. <laughs> okay, I have the all the animated ones already for those that you... Oh, let's take a look. So these are fairly simple. It actually, wait, am I missing one? Oh, I'm, I'm missing one, but I'll just show you guys this one's really quick. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, let's quickly jump onto your screen so that we can yeah. see nice. what you want us to show to us. <laughs> By the way, how do you guys my, like my living room? Isn't that cool? <laughs> It's so clean. Right? I've been cleaning up all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, right here I have the ones that I already exported. They're very simple because that's what I was going for. I just want a little bit of movement into them so that it catch your eye, but it's not too too crazy in this land. Okay, so we have female funded that is just a change in in the shape then we have this one that's a shape in position so it's rotating another shape in position but for this one we locked the um, 
we love the text so that one is not rotating and we only have the background rotating and then for vegan we just have a simple switch in in sizing so that it catches your your attention a little bit so those are the ones that we have for now i have prepared some other ones let's see oh we have four minutes until the um, artist spotlight so maybe we can get into into one of these after that but just very briefly i created some other stickers that are a bit more if i mean they're they're a little bit different from from the other ones and i think we can do some different movement too uh, one that i like is this one just did uh, an illustration of their of their package that they have right now so um maybe we can just move this a little bit or like make this twinkle or something let's see what we we come up with and then we're going to have to stop a little bit for the artist spotlight cool yeah i think those look great and i believe in this one that you're just showing right now uh, if those little uh moving um lines if they will be flickering a little bit i think that will already give it a lot of movement right <laughs> yes so what i do in this case is i just bring in the artboard and then i check like i make copies of it and see what we can do to this mm -hmm. there's a uh, some some different ways we can animate it we can maybe take this out and this these are like the simpler versions that we can do we can do one so let's ac let's actually do this let's do an exercise of how many ways of animating the same thing in a very simple way we can find <laughs> so one would be to just have these um flicker in and out and then we can also have these um move a little bit so we have the box and we will just move the box a little bit so that it, it's like very subtle rotate it a bit and then i can also make a change in these and a one cool way of making things flicker is by having two the, the same version of two things. So for example, here I have already draw these. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go on top of it. I'm gonna change the color for, for reference so I know which one is which, but I would go in and, sorry, I don't have my, my tablet with me right now, but we'll just make it a, so I would just go in and make it a bit different. Like I'll, you don't even have to do it purposefully. Sometimes you can just like, do it on top of it and it's not going to be perfect and this works better for for text for example if you're doing a hand-drawn hand-drawn typography you can just do it once and then do it the second time on a different layer exactly exactly but it's not going to be exactly like that because you're hand drawing it so it will have little shifts and that works really well for for gifis so it, that's one way of doing it. This, because this is just a line, it might be very like way too, way too subtle, the change, but just wanna do it so you guys uh, know what I mean. And we can come back to this because right now, the countdown for Artist Spotlight is at zero so hey. go to the artist spotlight oh and manuel i am from costa rica i'm from <laughs> is asking me i will always take the chance to say i'm from costa rica <laughs> oh paloma is saying yes simple cute and effective <laughs> and felix is saying nice animations lena awesome cool okay. yeah i'm excited to see what what artists we're going to spotlight today today we're spotlighting and let's come to my screen so you guys can see. It. Her name is Casey Navarro and she is a student at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, let's go through her 
work. Is there anything that you see here that you would like to go in first, Julia? First of all, I'm always obsessed with packaging projects or packaging and branding projects. So the first one will definitely catch my eye and I will totally take a look at it. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Um, so this is what she did. She, um, she created this kit for a slumber party and and she like branded it all and and created packaging for everything i thought this was super clever um i was obsessed with slumber parties growing up so <laughs> so i love it uh, to the time i always tell my friends like can we just do a pajama party please <laughs> they're yeah. like oh we're all married with kids that's <laughs> <laughs> that one, please that's how i So yeah, this is <laughs> this is what she created, and I, I I love these. What do you think of these, Julia? Look at it. Yeah, I also love how you are scrolling down, and the uh, mockups that she's created are first of all they're custom made. Second of all, they're super cohesive. She's like edit them, edit them in the same way, and the colors all match, and the style matches, which I think is really really great job. I also think it's a very unique idea for like a project. And um, I love the way also how she shows the inside of the box, you know, really going into depth of the product. Um, and then all the products next to each other align nicely. I think that's really, really nice work. Yeah, really, really cool. I love how the slippers are connected with this disc looking thing. Really yeah, nice. uh, it, it's, it's really cool. And she actually, it seems to me that she actually built all of these. In yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it seems like that. That's so cool. I this is one thing that I love about student work that I, I feel like student work showcases the best out of you because you have yeah. you don't have that limitation of the client and 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 you put so much effort into it because obviously you have school yeah. and, and a grade to to fulfill but but it's like not limited to a client telling you what to do and <laughs> what not to do. So this is really, really cute. Um, this is another project and this is a, for a fashion magazine. I think she has a really good eye for, for details, especially like everything, when you read everything, everything's like so well thought through. Yeah. I really love these. And um, let's see another packaging for, for Julia. <laughs> Please, yes. <laughs> oh. So this is some fancy thing. You know what's cool? I really love when designers can showcase not only one type of design, one, on, not only one direction, but can show a variety of different uh, styles of, you know, designing a package or designing a brand. I think that's really beautiful. It looks really cool. This is so beautiful. I, yeah, I think like through her throughout her portfolio she incorporates a lot of mediums too and and you can see that she like she's a very well-rounded designer mm -hmm. like, has good good packaging good branding good editorial so definitely and illustration too i'm wondering where those uh, illustrations are coming from if she actually made them that's um it's crazy pretty cool yeah no i love it and one thing that i love about student projects too is that you get to they like, create your own brand so you can go crazy with it like look at i mean look at this this is this is amazing <laughs> this is so cool it's probably also handmade i can see her like putting all the little pearls on on, <laughs> on the little um yeah drawer thing yeah it's crazy yeah and it it looks like she does a animation as well so let's check let's this out cool very nice super cool so cool and this has some background music so if you guys should go check it out to see the music as well because I'm sure you can hear it through <laughs> through my ear headphones, but but go check her out, behands.net slash Casey Navarro. Yeah, and you can also find um, the link to her profile if you go above the chat into the button where it says Artist Spotlight. If you click that, you'll be able to access her as well. Yes, 
anything else? Let's and also you can, um, oh yeah, you can also um, submit someone that you know for the, uh, or yourself um, filling out the form. So above the chat, there is this little button where it says artist spotlight, and then you can go onto the fo uh, form and submit someone or yourself uh, for future artist spotlights. Cool. Uh, so go, 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 go do a favor to your friends, to your designer friends and submit yeah. these. Cause That's a cool idea. yeah, it's, I'm sure it's an honor to to be part of this. Here's another project that she has. Um, and this is more in the branding sphere, so branding and and interface design. So let's check this out. This is the logo she created. It's for floor, floral. Um, and again, we have a completely different style, right? This is this one's more on the you know elegant side and more. Um, it's not that, that playful, it's more subtle, you know, minimalistic, interesting. Really love how she's showing the, you know, the different styles that she can work with and that she's so comfortable, you know, adapting to anything. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think, I mean, she's, she has a very, very strong portfolio and, and multidisciplinary talent too. Mm -hmm. You can see like, she's, just really really good I, I i love what she what she does mm -hmm. everything so that that was the ux design um very nice so yeah and one last one so that we can see an, another another talent of her um apparently she she did the art direction for for these and it's well she did not only the design identity but also the art direction for the photos. So very nice them here. And yeah, you guys should go follow her. You can also go while you're there. You can also go follow Julia and myself. <laughs> what is your your handle, Julia? Your Behance name? You can find us on in the info tab. You can find me and Lena. And then you can go ahead and um, in our Behance profiles, you will find the link to our other social media. So I'm mostly active on Instagram. Lena is also really active on Instagram. So let's see, Lena, do you have your um, Instagram linked on your Behance? Probably, right? You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have mine there, so you can just go there. It's the easiest. Otherwise, you can find me at Julia Maselska on Instagram. And um, yeah, just go ahead and follow us also on Behance. Here. Yes, go, go. I'm actually going to follow her right now. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go back to work. We have back to work. Of time to, to wrap this up. Um, so let's go. I'm just going to, to finish this. And, and what we're going to do today after... After this is done, we're going to finish doing the, um, all of the client folder and all the deliverables for, for our client Taylor from Tiny Bodega. Yeah, let's do this. I'm also um, working on the, on the IG highlight covers now. So just trying to find a, a good system. Again, Ooh. working with blocky colors. So... Um, and also, I've just realized that if you look at this package right now that you've illustrated, Lena, uh -huh. she's using that blockiness already. So mm -hmm. it's actually pretty, pretty good, uh, you know, um, pretty good connection there. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. So I, right here, what I'm gonna do is just take this into Photoshop. But you guys have seen that already. That process do you want to go to your screen so we can see your sure. process julia sure sure yeah we can do that um i'm actually just um you know selecting some of the imagery right now to put into the blocky um highlight covers yeah so when let's let's swap to mine real quick let's see what <laughs> um yeah the the structure that i've basically came up with <laughs> Paco, are you here? Paco. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's 
do it. Um, yeah, so as you can see, guys, I had this blockiness here, right? We have the color and the image. And the same thing I wanted to implicate into the IG highlight covers. So those will be IG size, and then they will be resized into a circle that you can place into your cover. So what I want to do is I want this to be basically um, like a center divider. So whenever we open, um, whenever we see the circle, it will show basically the center of this. Uh, let me actually just pull in a circle so you guys can see this better. Um, so it's going to be basically this part of the design that's going to be visible as um, as the um, thumbnail in the saved stories. So um, that's going to be it. And so now I have to kind of find a compromise of showing a story, uh, you know, story size, and then this being able to re be reduced in into the circle that we have. So um, let me make this maybe black so you guys can see this better. Um, okay, and I'm going to increase the stroke just a little bit so that it's better visible. I'm just going to place that all over the different templates so that we can uh, work with that. And I'm also going to lock those so they're not in the way when I'm designing underneath. And uh, locking things, command and two. So my idea here was to use a blocking color at the top and uh, at the bottom to use a, an image. So right now I'm looking at the images that I have and um, I've placed them in my libraries already. So I'm just going to pull in some of these and see which ones work. So we have here pe uh, pantry goals. I feel like pantry goals works really well with this one. Uh, let's see what that can, you know, how that works here in this context. And what I'm basically doing is now that I've already created the rectangle, I'm just going in arranging the image to the back and I'm using this rectangle that I've created on top as the clipping uh, mask. So now my image perfectly fits into this shape and I can use that like so. And here we have our brands. So let's see what else we have on images that we can just pull in here. Maybe, maybe this one is pretty good. It's showing a lot of brands. Again, I'm putting it to the back, arrange them to back and I am creating a clipping mask like so and then they will be nice and structured the same way once you open the profile you will see those circles and they will all have an image at the bottom and um the color block at the top and the colors will um you know they will be able to identify the different topics so uh, let's see what else have we not used yet uh, okay why exactly do you not want to turn Okay. How those are looking. Huh? I love how those how those are looking with Oh thanks. Thank you. And that's really cool. And the yeah, far we'll need to put some type in here. I guess I'm just going to put the type on top as an as an um, arch, just going around it. Um I just need to make sure that it's well legible. And uh, so yeah. Tiny recipes. I believe Lena was working on something for the uh, tiny recipes. Let's see where those are, tiny recipes. Um, yeah, maybe I can just select one of these images, command and C, and I'm going to place them in here, command and V. And maybe I can just use that um, image as the recipe image. I think that's a really nice image. <laughs> <laughs> Image, image, image. <laughs> I say that so many times. <laughs> okay, now this is cool. I'm gonna again place it to the back. Arrange, send to back. And again, we have our clipping mask already ready to go. Make clipping mask. Cool. Okay, this kind of works. Pantry goals. We have our brands, we have our tiny recipes, and we have press. Cool. This image we haven't even used yet. And now let's work on the text. Let's work on what is going to be written here and how. So I'm going to use a circle shape and I'm going to place it in the middle here. I'm going to actually make it just a little bit smaller so we can place the text on top. And then I'm going to be using the type on the path tool, just writing stuff around it. 
And so this one is supposed to say press. Um, so let's see how we can work this out. So it's well legible. So it's well legible and also, you know, positioned right. So we have these handles that will help us to place it in the right position. The only thing that I feel here is that I think what we need to do is we need to increase the size of this typeface by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but also we need to create a system where we can reuse that over and over, right? So I'm going to center align this, then turn around this rectangle. So the center alignment is actually in the center like so. And now I'm going to make that the light, the off-white color. Let's see if that will work for us. Again, I'm going to work, play around with the size of the text. So what else do we have? Press, tiny recipes. Tiny recipes. Okay, this kind of... Hmm. Ooh, and we I have to be about seven, eight more minutes with you guys. So, oh. guys, have anything that you want to ask us? Anything that we didn't go through? Let us let us know in the comments. Yeah, ask us any questions. Nina and I were already always really open about you know talking about things about <laughs> literally anything, <laughs> right, Lina? Personal questions, anything you want to know. <laughs> okay. Right. Friends. We will, we might need to play with the typeface here because I feel like from far it won't be that well legible, but um, just developing a little structure of information, right? And the top, the top being uh, an actual filled color will make it better legible in the end. So maybe we can even play with the colors here. Maybe we can, you know, select some of the lighter colors and then instead um, using a dark color for the typeface. That is also possible. Um, so, yeah. So we're getting some questions. Um, Karina is asking, how do we use those highlights? So if you go into, into Instagram and you see... Um, let me show you really quick a, a sample. Um, so here, when you go, I don't even know if you can see my screen, but when you go into an account, you see how some accounts have highlighted some of their content. So there's Instagram allows you to save some of your stories into highlights so that they're there for the future. And you can for instance, have a, a recipe highlight, a press highlight, or whatever you want to showcase. And those highlights have covers. So some brands just use a color, some brands use a photo, some brands don't use anything. <laughs> so that's what we're creating, so that the look is consistent with the overall aesthetic of, of these. So yeah. that's that's what we're doing. That's how you, and the way you use it, you have to create a highlight and then you create, you select a cover and that's when, when that goes. Exactly. Um, what else can we recommend? Here's a question. Can we recommend any online courses that are good if they want to learn how to copyright, how to do copywriting? Oh, I don't know. I have never attended any course that it has to do with copywriting, Lena. What about you? I I have never attended a specific course in copywriting, but for overall courses um, in like different categories, I like I like Skillshare because yeah. some some good courses of random things that maybe you can take there. But other than that, I I would not be able to help you with that question. Yeah, I really, I really think that a Skillshare is a really great platform for um, learning new things. I have attended so many courses and also um, Domestica is really good. I recently took a really amazing branding course there and it was about, um, you know, creating illustrations and kind of extending the brand experience and not only creating a logo, you know, just creating overall a lot of different things that the brand can use and reuse um, 
to kind of intensify the experience of the brand. That one was really, really amazing. It was uh, made by a studio in, um, in Mexico. And um, they're just, there's some really amazing Mexican designers. And I don't know if you guys ever looked into that, but um, if you look into also Anagrama Studio on Behance, they're amazing and their work is just so, so good. Um, there are some really amazing studios in, in Mexico and um, in general, to get back to the question, <laughs> um, yeah, um, what's it called? A Skillshare is always really great for learning new things and uh, really recommend it. Yes, me too. Definitely good. I, I want to take some Domestica courses too. I have had so many in my wish list, <laughs> but I, I need to find time. Hopefully, hopefully the new year comes with a little bit more of, of time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's see. Let's see. And I'm also placing some of the elements that Lena has created into the, into the center of the template now, into the center of the highlight covers now, so that it kind of has this connection because why not <laughs> <laughs> they look so cute thank you i'm excited to actually see them in use because um it's hard to imagine you know how things like that look okay yes. all right let's do this Lina, so, um, do you want to start kind of putting everything together? It's coming to an end, yeah. but really quickly, we just wanted to give you a quick recap of what we have been doing in these two days. For those of you that maybe are tuning in for the next stream and we're here, <laughs> now you can get a quick recap of what we did and maybe you want to tune in for, for these. Um, we are helping Tiny Bodega to with all their social media branding. So we started with social media posts and um, we started creating social media posts, animated those posts on a yeah. And we also created some templates for them to use and reuse. And then this was day one and day two. Today we have been focusing on exporting those templates and best practices to export templates and export social media posts. But we also did their entire social media optimization. So creating all their covers and highlight covers, avatars, etc., for them to use. And we also created some stickers for, for their Instagram. So we created some fun animated Giffies that they can use. Yay! <laughs> what else have we done? And yeah, and we've just rushed through this <laughs> because we need to get this out to our client in a day. So yeah, here we have a little a little insight into the um, highlight covers for Instagram. So the. The piece inside the circle basically will be visible and um, I've put some of the shapes. It still needs to be finalized, but the idea I think is pretty much set that we put the image at the bottom and the color at the top. So we have some space to put some text on top and it will still be legible. Um, yeah. So guys, it's been su such a, such a fun time. Lina, as usual, such a pleasure <laughs> designing with you. I think, uh, uh, yeah, it was just so much fun whenever we're working together. <laughs> I know. Thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge, Julie. I always learn so much from our streams. And I'm so grateful for you and for your talent. Oh, thank you so much. And thanks everybody who joined us. I know there were so many people who were reaching out um to me writing messages like oh my god i need to i need to see this i need to see a replay of this uh of this video because i've been posting some <laughs> stuff yesterday and uh yeah if you haven't watched yesterday's yesterday's video check it out rewatch this maybe you can learn a bunch of things if you kind of recap it and rewatch it um yeah thank you so much for everybody who was 
hanging out with us for these two days. It's been such a pleasure and have a great um, Christmas time. If we don't see each other anymore, oh, well, we see, we'll see each other tomorrow, but Lena, out to you, a great Christmas time. And until next time. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. See you soon. Don't forget to apply to Here to Help or send me your designer's ideas. All right.